This is a video to help you calculate power. It is based on homework 9, number 2b. If you don't have that homework in front of you, you can see the description of this video for the text. Let me just write down some of the important numbers that we will need for the calculation. We have a sample size of 25. We know the population variance is equal to 225. And the null hypothesis is that the mean is greater than 80. Because of that, we know the alternative hypothesis is the complement to that, that the mean is less than or equal to 80. So if we're assuming the null hypothesis is true, then what we have is the sampling distribution of a mean of 25 people is going to be centered at 80. Now, if we get a number bigger than 80, say that our sample mean is 85, that agrees with the null hypothesis, we won't be able to reject it. What we need is for it to be enough less than 80 that it's in this alternative space that falls in this red rejection region. And part B of the question says that alpha equals 0 0.05. So now you can go to your Z table and find the critical value for when alpha equals 0 0.05 and the first thing you'll probably do is look up and say, okay, well my critical value, Z star, I always find critical values in a table, and it's going to be 1.645, okay? Well, what happens now, if we were to standardize this, a number like 1.645 is 1.645 standard deviations above the mean. That would give us a number greater than 80 that would agree with the null hypothesis we couldn't reject. Notice that your rejection region is a smaller number than the hypothesized value. We're going to make sure that that is a negative critical value for z. Knowing that, we can calculate what is the value of our blood pressure here below which we would reject the null hypothesis. All right, so we want to find this x bar star. All right, well, if we take our critical z value, negative 1.645, that's going to equal that cutoff value minus the hypothesized mean over the standard error of x bar, which will be 225 over 25, and then take the square root of that. And what we find after we solve that equation is that if alpha equals 0 0.05, then our critical x bar is 75.065. Now in order to calculate power, we're going to have to know what the truth is. And the second part of the problem tells you what the truth is. We have this true x here equals 73. And now we know that x bar star is 75.065. So what that means is that if we get a number bigger than 75.065, like 76, we will fail to reject now this is a false null hypothesis, so if we get a number like 76, we're going to have type 2 error because we fail to reject this false null hypothesis. But if we get a number less than x bar star, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and it turns out that the null hypothesis was false. So we're correctly rejecting a false null hypothesis, and that gives us power. Okay, so a number like 74, we would be rejecting this false null, we would be in here, and that would count toward our power. So now to calculate the power, we could just standardize this right here and find out what's the probability of getting a sample mean less than 75.065 if we know that the true mean is 73. So let's just calculate a z-score for that. 75.065 minus the true mean of 73. Now we still have the same standard error as before with a sample size of 25, we'll take the population variance, divide it by that sample size, and then square root it. And what we find now is that the z-score for this 75.065 is equal to 0.688. So let's go to our table and look up 0.69, that's the closest number we have. And we find that the CDF of z equals 0.69 is equal to 0.75. Four, nine. So that is going to equal our power.